Hi friends, Mindy here. I am working on a project today for Prepared From Above. It's the Bible Challenge Kit 7. And I have started making this little book and today I'm going to bind it into the cover. I've been working in it just loose, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and attach it to the cover. This is a flip through of each of the days up till now uh, through day 11. For every day there's a scripture prompt and I have them just loose here on the signatures. And so I'm gonna take those last two signatures that are blank and take all of that and bind it together in the cover that I'll be using. This is on some pretty heavyweight cardstock, so the pages are pretty sturdy. And I made the cover out of the same cardstock. I just did two layers of it, so it's two layers glued together. And I'm going to take this piece, which measures nine and three quarters by four, and I am going to score a three quarter inch spine. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just scoring the three quarter inches. That's gonna be the place where I bind all of the signatures to. So on this book, when it's finished, you'll actually be able to see the stitching from the outside. And because this is so thick, I'm having to just take my bone folder here and run it along in the crease as I'm folding it just to get a really nice crisp seam right there. And I'm doing it on the other side. It just helps to make sure that you can fold it without any of the paper breaking or anything like that. So I'm just checking it, folding it, and this is going to be the cover. And you can do this with any size book or any size spine, depending on how thick your pages are. And I'm just checking to make sure they're all gonna fit in there okay. And I think that three quarter inch spine is gonna be plenty for what I need for this. And I'm going to use a, what's called a three hole pamphlet stitch to bind all of the signatures. So what I've done here is taken a piece of paper that is three quarters of an inch wide, the same as the spine, and I'm just making four lines, one for each signature, down the length of that piece of paper. And then measuring the middle at two inches and making a line the opposite direction that intersects all of those. And then I will make a line in the top section and in the bottom section. And that's gonna give me the template for the three holes that I need to punch. And this will keep it so that the stitching is relatively even and straight. I am certainly not a professional bookbinder. I would refer you to Nick the Booksmith here on YouTube or Sea Lemon. They both have um, amazing bookbinding skills. I'm definitely an amateur when it comes to that. But what I'm doing here is just now making lines um, that intersect and then just to show you I've, dr I've drawn a dot here you can see where every one of those lines intersect I'm going to put a hole there that is going to be the guide for the signatures as I'm stitching them down so I have an all over here on the left and I'm getting a pad this is an old pad that I've had. It's a really thick, dense foam, but you could use a mouse pad or a self-healing mat, a foam book. Um, there's all kinds of things that you could do, just something that, you know, you can stab into without hurting it. So I'm lining up that piece of paper in the spine and holding it down really tightly, and then I'm just taking my awl. And in every one of those intersections, I'm punching a hole. So it's those 
holes become the three holes that we'll use for each of the signatures. So I'll have four rows of those three holes. And then I'm taking another piece of paper. In hindsight, this was maybe a little bit of an extra step, but it made sense at the time. <laughs> so I'm taking an, another piece of paper and I'm drawing where those holes are. And then I'm going to use this template for the inside of the signatures to make sure that I get the holes that we're going to line up with the holes that are in the spine. And it just makes the stitching of it easier. It's not necessary to do this. You can just, you know, puncture straight through, but I just find it that my stitchers are even more evenly spaced if I go ahead and do this step. So for each of the signatures, I'm going to put that template in there and punch the three holes. And I like to kind of keep the paper at a little bit of an angle. It just makes it a little bit easier to punch to make sure that the holes um, to make sure the holes stay right on the edge of the spine of each one of the signatures. So I've gone ahead and done that for all four signatures. And just checking the alignment and everything, I tend to do that a lot. And what I'm using today is jute, but you can use all kinds of things to bind. This brown one is actually waxed linen, and waxed linen is great for binding books because it slides through the paper really easy but I didn't want to use that color and I didn't have a lighter color in the wax linen thread so I'm going to use this jute and what I'm doing here is just measuring and typically the, the amount of thread you need approximately is about three times the length of your paper so I just roughly measured that and then I'm going to thread that jute onto this book binding needle, which is just really long and kind of a thick needle with a bigger eye. I'm, I'm going to fiddle with it just a little bit, but once I have that threaded on there, I'm going to leave a bit of a tail and I'm going to open the signature up and I'm going to start by trying to make sure that all the holes are lined up and I'm going to go through the signature in the middle hole and then I'm going to take the cover and in the very top row in the middle hole, I'm going to go pull that thread through. And on the inside, I'm going to leave a tail there that we're going to tie off later. And then from the outside, it doesn't matter. You can go either to the top or to the bottom. You're going to go back in to the middle of the signature and then pull that through pretty tight and just make sure to keep a hold of the tail as you're doing it and then you go all the way to the top now or to the other side and go back out through the spine and then from here we're going to go back into the middle in the middle stitch that we started but it's really important when you're going back into the signature to not go through the thread so you just want to watch where your needle is coming up through there and you also want to be on the opposite side. So you'll have the tail on one side of that long piece of thread. And then when you come up, you come up on the opposite side. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but basically when you tie off, you want to have that middle long piece of thread down the middle of the knot that you're going to make. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to make a square knot and you just pull everything really tight, make that square knot. I was just checking this to the stitches to make sure on the outside that it was nice and tight and there wasn't it was nice and flush up against the spine. So then I'm just tying a square knot here with these pieces and I like to keep the pieces pretty long, but you could trim them right up next to the knot if you wanted to. I just like to leave a little bit of length on there. I just like that look, but you could certainly trim it down, you know, as short as you wanted it to. Just be careful around the knot. The other thing that you can do is you can take those tails 
and sort of tuck them back up underneath the um, the other string that's there. And if you're using waxed linen thread, that's another benefit to using that, is those kind of stay intertwined a little bit better. But again, I like the loose threads, so I just leave them, and I leave them pretty long. You can do other things, too. If you leave them long, you can tie things onto them or or whatever. So that's what it looks like with the first signature, and you can see the holes left for the other three signatures. So I'm just going to do that same process for these other signatures. So again, I've threaded my needle with three times the length of thread, and I start in the middle of the signature and go from the middle to the outside of the spine. And just having these holes punched, that's why I did that step, because this cardstock is really thick. It just makes it easier than trying to just manually push the needle through. And then here I almost made a mistake by wrapping myself around, and then I realized that that wasn't, something wasn't right. So I caught myself, thankfully, before I got too far. So anyway, from the outside spine, you come into the middle at either the top or the bottom. I'm just trying to get all that lined up. And then I'm gonna go down to the other end, go back out to the outside of the spine. And you have some flexibility here before you tie that knot so you can kind of move things around and adjust as you need to. And then just going to the outside of the spine. And then we'll go back in through that middle hole again. And again, you just pull the tight, the tail on the inside. And then as you're going back in, just be very careful not to split that thread that's already there. And then again, just with having each of the tails on either side of that long piece of thread, you're going to basically tie a square knot that is around that middle piece, and it secures that middle piece, and you're basically tying those end pieces to that middle thread. So just tying a square knot, pulling it tight, and then trimming off the excess. And I usually keep mine about the same length from the top stitch down to the bottom stitch. That's just how I line mine up. So then I'm going to go ahead and sew on the third signature there. And then this is the last signature. And I went ahead and decided to um, stitch these into the cover now before they got too bulky because it's just easier than trying to deal with all that extra bulk from all of the added papers. So I'm just clipping the strings from this last signature on those tails and just tucking those in there. This is my finished book. You can see I'll do a flip through of those pages again now that they're bound to the cover. You can see the 11 pages that I've done so far. And I'll just keep working through adding a little bit to each page as the month progresses. And that's what it looks like all finished. There's the spine. You can see how the stitches look. And I will decorate the cover probably closer to the end of the month. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you taking the time to do that. 